Hey there, this is Math 7, Unit 4, Lesson 15, looking at air <coughs> intervals. So we're going to solving more problems about <coughs> percent air. What we've talked about so far is we've talked about a percent air being um, a way of measuring like how far off you are when you made an estimation um, compared to the actual measurement of something. Okay, an air interval is going to be like this. It's going to be, what we're talking about today is like, let's just say that the correct measurement is like at this point okay and this is not anything fancy here right an error interval means that perhaps you're allowed to make a mistake by this much or this much let's say this is your grade on your next test right and you can get an a on your next test if you score like 50 points okay on your next test but if you score like 53 we're still going to give you an a which kind of makes sense right but if you score like 47 we'll still give you an a Okay, this like distance between here and here, or this whole thing becomes our interval, which is a way of saying there's kind of a range of scores that are all gonna be equal to that A grade. And so today as we look at this, we're gonna talk about percent of error, and talk about what that percent of error could be and how there might be an interval for that percentage on both sides of the line that would also indicate you get an A. So let's take a look at this first one. It says an industrial scale is guaranteed by the manufacturer to have a percent error of no more than 1%. What is a possible reading on the scale if you put 500 kilograms of iron ore on it? So it means, okay, in this case here, like our picture, we say, all right, we're gonna put 500 right here. So how much less or how much more than 500 might the scale right, uh, indicate, right? If I put it on the scale, it might say a little less than 500, it might say a little more than 500. The company says that it can be no more than a 1% error. So I'm trying to find out essentially, what is that 1% of 500 to go on this side or that side of 500? So if 1% is written as a percentage, and I want to turn it into a decimal, I'm gonna go one, two here, right, 0 0.01. So 1% 1 of 500 is gonna be equal to five. That tells me that I can have a reading that might be five less or five more than the actual amount that I'm weighing there. So if I have a 500 kilograms of iron ore, I could actually have anywhere between 495 and 505 as the reading of that scale, and the scale would say it's accurate, okay? So that's a 1% error for a 500 kilogram thing. Now if you think about it, that means you're off by five kilograms on one direction or five kilograms the other direction. So you have to decide if you are okay with a 1% error when you use that scale to measure something. Just kind of helps you get an idea there. So we did 1% of 500 to find our five, and then we added five and we subtracted five to find out that interval, the distance, the difference between um, our 500 on both sides of that. Okay, that's our idea today. So number two says sawmill. A sawmill cuts boards that are 16 feet long. After they are cut, the boards are inspected and rejected if the length has a percent error of 1.5% or more. So again, here's our middle point here. We're gonna keep it as long as it goes between 1.5% this way and 1.5% this way, okay? If it goes past that, then we're gonna say, nope, we can't keep it, nope, we can't keep it. So that's our interval for the, the size of these boards that it's allowed to be for this to work. So if we're starting at 16, I'm gonna have to find out, okay, well, what is 1.5% of 16? So again, I have my 1.5%, and I move that here decimal wise become 1.015 times 16. And when I do 0 0.015 times 16, I end up with 0.24. Okay, 0.24. So that's how many, like how much I can be off there. So for an example, 0.24, I then take my 16, right? And I can do 16 minus 0.24 to find out my small side, six, seven, or my, my how much less, right? 15.76, or I can add 0.24 and end up with 16.24. So 
So what we're saying is that my interval for the length of boards can be anywhere between 15.76 feet and 16.24 feet. That is the interval in terms of the lengths of boards that would be acceptable if they'd be okay. To be rejected, if I went with 15.75, because that's less than that number there, that would be a rejected board. If I went with 16.25 or greater, because bigger than that amount, that would be a rejected board there. So the idea is I'm finding what is about 1.5% away from my middle, my, my value, and I'm going on either side of that, that number, right? here's my 16, to decide there's 1.5% less, 1.5% more, and then this becomes too much. It's too great, or great of a factor there. Okay, so that's the idea for that one right there. Let's take a look at this last one on this question. It says a sawmill also cuts boards that are 10 feet, 12 feet, and 14 feet long. An inspector rejects a board that was 2.3 inches too long. What was the intended length of the board? Okay, so now I have three different lengths here. Okay, so I need to find 1.5% of a 10 foot board, 1.5% of a 12 foot board, and 1.5% of a 14 foot board. Okay, so I have three different problems I'm working on here. So this becomes 0 0.015, 0 0.015, 0 0.015 of, of, of 10, 12, and 14. So this is gonna tell me my 1.5% error that's allowed. So when I do this one, I get 0.15, here I get 0.18, and here I get 0.21, okay? So, well, in this case here, these are gonna be my, this is my feet, right? This is in, this is in feet, all this is feet. So this is feet, feet, feet. But I'm knowing I'm over 2.3 inches. So again, they add this extra piece here. I gotta turn this into inches. So to turn it into inches, let's multiply by 12, multiply by 12, multiply by 12, because 12 inches in one foot, okay? So 0.15 times 12 is 1 1.8. 0.18 times 12 is equal to 2.16. And 0.21 times 12 is 2.52. Now the error was 2.3, which means it's rejected, so it went over. For my 10 foot board, I can only go 1.8 over. If I go more than that, which that is more, right, then I'm rejected. So that would be a reject here because 1.8 is the distance I'm allowed to go and it went too much. 2.16 also is going to be, um, be, this is the distance that's allowed, right? This is my allowed, this is my reject mark. So I can only go 2.16 and it went 2.3, that would be a possible one, be rejected. If it was a 14 foot board, right, 2.3, is how much went over, that's within the limits, that's gonna be okay. So the ones you'd reject would be the 10 foot and the 12 foot board, potentially. Okay, so that's that one there. Let's flip over to your summary today, just to wrap it up. You did do a little activity, perhaps for your partner, you have a quality control problem, and you got some data to talk about with your classmates um, and talking about some information, getting a good conversation to see what do you need, what do you need more of, and to help one another out there. So here's our lesson summary for this, I, this lesson today. We're really talking about a margin of error, right? How far off is gonna be okay? And in this example here, there's a margin of error for a cereal box that is about 5%. And so again, what that means is that there's a place where if the cereal box is 750 um, grams of cereal, I have a margin of error of 5% on both sides of that line, meaning I can have 5% more or 5% less right and still be okay it could be either above or below the correct amount and that's what we're looking at with our air interval today okay take a pause there and then let's take a look at your homework all right so here we go for the homework for lesson 15. It says Jada measured the height of a plant in a science experiment and finds that to the nearest quarter of an inch, it is four and three fourths inches. So we're gonna be asked a series of questions. What's the actual height of the, the, the plant could be? 
what's the smallest actual height, so the largest height it could be, the smallest it could be, and then how large could the percent error be in the measurement. So several questions here. What I thought about was this. I thought about, well, let me think about a ruler, for example, okay? So if I have a ruler and this is like, you know, zero and this is one inch, okay, and this is not to scale, right? And I cut this up and said, well, there's where a half would be, here's where three-fourths of an inch would be, here's where one-fourth of an inch would be, okay? Then I also have these little segments in here which might be considered eights, right? This would be seven-eighths, and over here I would have five-eighths, right? And these would be eights as well. This is three-eighths, and this is one-eighth. So if I'm marking out like what a ruler would look like. So for example, if this is four and three-fourths, I could say that this is four, this is five, in terms of my inches, if this was to continue on that way, and that this height of the plant went all the way from four out to four and three-fourths, right? So we're gonna go from here out to four and three-fourths is what they're saying. Now that was the measurement that was given to the nearest quarter of an inch, okay? The nearest quarter of an inch is what it says, okay? So the height is there. So that means that this is the quarter of an inch I'm talking about, right? The three-fourths, but that means that I'm looking for anything that could be, that would make you round up or round down to get to this point, okay? This is the point I'm looking at here. And so if I go anywhere else, I can round up or I can round down to the nearest quarter of an inch. So because quarters are here, okay? What are the quarters are here? Then what I'm looking at is if I get to the halfway point, right? Let's take for example here. We'll look at the largest height it could be. If if I am at this point, right? Let's say that I was extends line to there. What would be the closest quarter of an inch? Would this point be closer to the three fourths or closer to the next whole number? Well, we'd say closest to the next whole number, wouldn't we? Right? So the largest it could be would be somewhere about here at the 7 eighths mark, because once I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and say I am closer to 3 fourths, so I'm rounding down, okay? So the closest, the largest this plant could be would be up to almost 7 eighths, right? So 4 and 7 eighths would be the largest that it could be. The same is true on this side. I'm gonna be somewhere here about 5 eighths because if I was to go any more this direction, I'm closer to the half right closer to the half part so i would say the smallest it could be is four and five eighths so I'm, the, what i'm measuring up against i'm comparing to is this is the one measurement three fourths and i want to see well i if i'm rounding the quarters i can round to one of those three spots and i want to make sure whatever i round is going to send me back to in this case here the three fourths so that means i want to stay in that window right there that's my window of, of uh for this measurement any plant measurement in that window would round to the three-fourths line, okay? If I went below that, I'd round down, and above that, I'd round up. So how large could the percent error in Jada's measurement be? Well, we're talking about how large could the error be between these, these measurements here? Well, I can only go out, I can't go further than, and this is a space of one-eighth, I can't go further than one-eighth that direction or one-eighth that direction. Okay, so again, imagine my line here. There's my line, and I can go one-eighth this way, or I can go one-eighth that way, okay? So my percent error is gonna be one-eighth of, the, in this case here, uh, of the four and the three-fourths, okay? So one-eighth as a decimal is 0.125, okay? And so we're looking at 0.125 as a decimal divided by the actual um, kind of measurement that we're talking about here which is four and three fourths, that becomes 16, 19 over four, 19 over four written as a decimal, or I can write it as 4.75, be a little easier, that make more sense. <laughs> so 0.125 divided by 4.75 is equal to 0 0.029. And if we want to turn that into a percent, we move over two spots and say 2.9%. So the percent error that's will be allowed in this case would be 2.9% percent. We're taking that one-eighth and we're saying I can have an error of about one-eighth of a percent out of the whole thing which is 4.75. Alright the next one number two. Water is running in the bathtub at a constant rate. After two minutes the tub is filled with 2.5 gallons of water. 
write two equations for this proportional relationship and use W for water and T for time. Okay, so let's do it like this. Let's do our M, or let's do our, sorry, we'll do T. <laughs> I like to go X and Y, right? That's my X and Y. In this case here, X is gonna be our time. Let's do time first, and let's do water. Okay, those are two values. So we have T and our W. So what's happening is, is that after two minutes, so after two minutes, we have 2.5 gallons of water, okay? So that's what I have so far. That's the information that's given to me right there. Do I have a K value? Well, a K would be Y divided by X, 2.5 over two, which equals 1.25. So now if I write this as an equation, Y, which is actually gonna be W, equals my K value, 1.25, times my x, which in this case is t. So w equals 1.25t. That's one value, or one equation. The other equation, we switch it around, okay? We make our x and our y the different ones. We make x actually be the water, and y be time. In this case, still the same thing. The water's going in at 2.5 gallons in two minutes. I'm gonna have a different K value though, aren't I? K in this case would be two over 2.5, which becomes 0.8, okay? So now my Y is my T, so T equals my K value, right? Times my X value, which is W, all right? So both these equations would work for the information that was given there. It does. It is helpful to write data down as a table if you're not quite sure how to set that up. So our x and our y time water or water time to go the other way, but they each have a different k value, so keep that in mind. All right, number three. It says Noah picked three kilograms of cherries. Jada picked half as many cherries as Noah. How many total kilograms of cherries did Jada and Noah pick? Okay, so what's happening is we have Noah picks 100% of three kilograms of cherries. So that's my 100% there. And I'm gonna to add to that what Jada picked, which is half as many. So he, it's gonna be half, which is, right, half of whatever the three kilograms that Noah did. So there's the 50%, which is half. I can rewrite this as one times three plus 0.5 times three, because 0.5 is half. And I can combine the one and the 0.5 right to be 1 plus 0 0.5 times 3 and I can take a look and say where do I see that not there 3 minus nope 1 plus 0 0.05 times 3 yep 1 plus 0 0.05 times 3 almost right problem here is order operations would make you do that first so that has to have parentheses in order for that to work that's why that's the appropriate one so that would not work there we'd say C for number 3 let's take a look at number 4 all right. Okay, the reading on a car speedometer has 1.6% maximum air. 1.6% maximum air. The speed limit on the road is 65 miles per hour. Okay, it says the speedometer reads 64 miles per hour. Is it possible that the car is going over the speed limit? So we know our speed limit is 65, and it reads 64 miles per hour. So what we wanna do is find, let's do this, here we go, ready? Let's do letter A, A. Okay, so again, we have 1.6% of 64. We're gonna move this over two spaces and have 0 0.016 times 64, which is equal to 1.024, okay? So the question is, is it going over the speed limit? If the air can be 1.024 more than what it says or less, if I do 65, or sorry, 64 plus 1.024, now it's at 65.024, that is greater than 65 miles per hour. <laughs> so for choice A, you would say, yes, it's possible, because you could be doing 65.025. It's possible. Now let's take a look at B. <coughs> the speedometer reads 66 miles per hour. Is the car definitely going over the speed limit? That's the question. If it reads 66 miles per hour, is it definitely going over? Well, again, if there's a 1.6% error, 
So 1.6% 1 of 66, that again is 0 0.016 times 66, which equals 1.056, okay? So let's see. If, I, if it said 66.00, right? And I subtract it, subtract from it 1.056, okay? We borrow here, make that a 10, make that a nine, a 10, a nine, we get four, four, nine, and then four, 64. So with the 1.6% error, if that's a possibility, on the low end of things, we would take that amount away from 66, and it actually could be going 64.944 miles per hour. Really close, we would say, is the car definitely going over? It's not definitely going over because it could be actually less than 65 miles per hour. So a little bit of a different kind of question there, just something to think about um, and to play with a little bit. Okay, number five. Here is the shape, a shape with some measurements in centimeters. Complete the table showing the area of different scaled copies of the triangle. Okay, if the scale factor is one, then our area is gonna be, again, triangle is one half of the base times the height. And so in our case here, scale factor of, 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 uh, uh, of one, we would say that's gonna be equal to simply three, okay? If I did a scale factor of two, now my height becomes four and my base becomes, double that up, six, right? So I end up with one half of six times four. That becomes two times six is 12, and I have 12 as an answer there, okay? So for each of these, what I can see is I'm taking my scale factor so far, and I am multiplying it by three, in this case here it looks like, here it's not just multiplying by three, but I'm actually gonna square the scale factor, two squared is four times three. So I'm squaring this and multiplying it by three. If I look at five, does it work the same? Five squared times three, five squared is 25. 25 times three is 75, let's take a look here. If I did times five times two, five times two would be 10, and then five times three is 15, one half of 15 times 10, five, 10 divided by two is five, and five times 15 is 75. So what's happening is I'm taking my scale factor, squaring it, and multiplying by three. So I have a three S squared. Is the relationship between the scale factor and the area copy proportional? We would say, no, it's not, and you need to be able to explain why it's not. Again, to be proportional, there needs to be one number we multiply by all the way down. That's the, the only thing that's changing. But in this case here, because we're using an exponent to square things, we're doing two things to our number, and so it's not gonna work out quite right. Hope that helps you out with today's lesson, and we'll see you next time when we get into unit number five.